So you want to become a better leader. You read leadership books, watch content here on YouTube, and of course you observe others in how they lead. And of course, there is not a single textbook that you can refer to because there are many different paths, there are many different avenues that you could take. And then you hear the notion that also you should be authentic as a leader, and that seems impossible. How can you follow all that different advice and still be yourself? I want to explore with you seven different thoughts that can make you a more authentic leader. Hello, welcome back, or if it's the first time for you here, hello, my name is Kai. On this channel, I focus on advice that helps you grow personally, professionally, and as a leader, and create a life that you can be proud of. Now, check out the description box below for more content, and if you want to show some love to the channel, then please do give me a thumbs up. Without further ado, let's get right into our content. Thought number one I want to share with you sounds a little bit like a fraud, except your authentic self. But wait a moment, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that you should accept how you got to the position that you're holding right now. Have you risen through the past as a generalist or have you been a specialist who was promoted to be a manager? I do see a lot of leaders who try to hide where they have come from. See, as a generalist, sometimes we try to impress those around us and try to learn everything about the particular subject that you are dealing with. Or as a specialist, we want to prove ourselves that we can be a good manager by being a generalist. But rather than doing that, embrace where you've come from. Or you've risen through the ranks as a generalist. And now you can take the specialist knowledge from your team member and you can supplement that with your knowledge that gives them a different perspective as well. The second thought I want to share with you is that people's opinions do not define you. If you became a manager with the aspiration of being everybody's friend, you have to think again because you can't rely on other people's opinions. Don't seek approval. And as soon as you stop seeking approval, you will actually find approval from the people around you. The third thought can be a little bit tricky. Share your opinions even if other people disagree. Now, that is something that maybe you have unlearned before you became a manager. But now that you are, you need to provide your opinion. But make sure that you speak last. See, it's very difficult for an employee if you've already told them your opinion to disagree with you. They want you to like them. They want you to approve of their skills. And if you provide your opinion first, it makes the conversation sometimes awkward. So listen to everybody else's opinion, but at the end of the day, share your own opinion. And if it's a different one and you want to go in a different direction, don't be afraid to do so. The fourth thought is to handle criticism better. Yes, we all know that we should receive constructive criticism. We all know that criticism makes us better. And if people around us have the courage to tell us the honest truth, that's better for us overall. But of course, not everybody is the same. Some people take criticism very well. Some people take it very personally. And that doesn't change the one day when you become a manager. So accept who you are. If you take criticism very personally, there's nothing wrong with pointing that out to the people around you. Tell them that sometimes you take things personally, but you value their opinion. You still want to hear it. And that helps making the conversation less awkward. Thought number five, stop trying to be like everybody else. See, I worked in two major corporations and what I observed there is that each of those organizations had a certain leadership culture, something that was considered to be good leadership. And especially when you came into the company and were promoted as a new manager, then you adopted those principles. And it's always good to learn from other people, to observe them and to learn things from them and how you can handle certain situations. But don't let that override your personal opinion on what good leadership is, because some companies don't have good leaders and you could be the first. And other companies have great leaders, but maybe their style doesn't quite fit your personal style. And so rather than molding yourself into that leadership style, 
be yourself. Try to be that great leader that you read about, that you learn about. Incorporate the thoughts that you see from those around you. Acknowledge what the leadership culture is in your organization, but still weave in your own personal opinions, your own personal style as well. Thought number six, cherish solitude. We've all heard those words, it's very lonely at the top. And yes, I can attest to that, sometimes that is certainly true. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you should cherish that solitude, to take some time, write down the things that you want to accomplish, make a strategic plan for your company or for your department, and use that solitude time to find exactly how you would like to manage your team. And the final thought that I want to share with you is rather a tip, and that is interview yourself. As leaders, we are very used to interviewing other people, but how used are you to interviewing yourself? Asking yourself the tough questions. What are your best qualities? What are your worst qualities? Where do you stand morally on certain items? Where do you want the department to be in 10 years or your business? How do you define success? And most importantly, what aspects are you hiding from others? And what's the worst thing that can happen if they find out? If you take the time to interview yourself, asking yourself those questions, you will also find out the aspects where maybe you feel a little bit inauthentic. And then you can address them, you can think about ways of becoming more authentic. Now, I hope those seven thoughts help you to discover a little bit more what authentic leadership means. And I wish all of you, of course, that you become a great and authentic leader. Now, Please do show some love to the channel if you enjoy this content. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have seen me a couple of times before and haven't subscribed yet. And there are a couple of videos that may help you on the journey as well. I'll link them on the screen right now. I'll see you over there and of course in the next video. Mm -hmm.